Now last week we did a webinar and we talked a lot about using creative filters to modify our landscapes. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit similar, but we're going to be using portraits. And last webinar we used a lot of the new filters specifically just on the portrait or just on the landscapes alone. So today we're going to be using more of the develop tab as well as our effects tab. So we'll start out by modifying the tone and color and we'll develop the basic foundational look for our images first. And then we'll go into effects and we'll start modifying the portraits using all of the new filters. So let's start with this first photograph here. So I'm just going to go inside Photo Raw 2020 and I'm just going to select this photograph and I'm going to head into the develop tab really quickly by hitting D on my keyboard. So if you're inside of the browse module and you're in grid view and you have a photo selected, to head right into the edit module, just hit D on your keyboard. So now we're inside of the edit module and it's taken us into our develop tab. So now we're going to set the foundational look for this portrait. And with portraits like this, when there's a little bit of backlight, you can see that there's a little bit of sun kind of hitting her hair right here. And we have this large tonal area of highlights right there. What I typically do with these photographs is I head into my tone and color and I go down to my midtones right away. And the reason I go to my midtones right away is because when we're shooting portraits, most of the time the skin tones are going to be your midtones. So if I pull up on my midtones, it's going to brighten up her skin tones. And then I can see a lot more of her. It looks like a better exposed photograph. It just makes for a nicer looking shot. So in these situations, I tend to grab the midtone slider first. And then I'll pull up on my midtones a little bit. It's given a little bit of life. And then I'm going to head down and I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow boost like that. And now what I want to do next is I want to add in a little contrast. Be, so whenever we're excuse me. So whenever we're modifying our midtones or our shadows, more often than not, we're going to be removing a lot of contrast from our photo. So we don't want our image looking incredibly flat, especially if it's a portrait. So to add in that contrast, there's two ways we could do it. We could add in contrast using our contrast slider, and that's probably going to be a more natural, even way of adding in contrast. So if I pull up on my contrast slider, it adds in a nice bit of contrast, and then it doesn't look so flat. Another way we could add in contrast is we could head down to our black slider here. And if you're going to add in contrast using your black slider, I would recommend using your J key, and that's going to show you your clipping warnings. So if you want to see your clipping warnings, just hold down the J key on your keyboard. And that's going to show you all your true white and your true black without any detail. So in here I can see I have a lot of true white without any detail kind of on the area above her head, which is no big deal. We're kind of shooting into the sun anyway, or there's a lot of sun coming into the frame anyway, so it's not a huge deal that there's this blown out area. What we're focused on right here is mainly the contrast. So if we head back down to our tone and color, and we pull back on our black slider, you can see now we have a little bit of blue overlay. And that's showing us our true black without any detail. So watch as I add in just a little bit. It goes a little too strong pretty quick, but maybe about right there looks pretty good for adding in just a little bit more contrast. So now let's hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And we're on the right track. We're just moving right along and developing the foundational look. So now that we've added in a little bit of contrast to our photograph, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up to my exposure and just pull it up maybe about right there. And I know that by pulling up on the exposure, it's going to brighten all of the areas on the photograph. And what that does is that's going to brighten even these bright highlights, and it's going to make it look ev even more blown out. But it's not a huge deal because her face is in focus, and it's not overly highlighted, so it's not a huge deal that this area is a little bit blown out. Okay, so now we'll head down to our color area, and I'm just going to correct the color really quick. To do that, I'm going to use this color dropper, and then I'm going to head over and I'll drop it on this area of white on our coffee cup. Perfect, and I think it just heated up the photo a little bit. Yep, so it just heated up the photo a hair. Sweet. So now if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, just a basic foundational look, nothing too crazy, and we just did it by modifying our midtones and our shadows first, and that was to bring out the exposure, kind of bring some life into our skin tones and then bring out some of these darker areas 
And then what we did is we brought back contrast because whenever we're pulling up on our midtones and our shadows, we're, remo we're removing contrast from our photograph. So to bring that in, we used our contrast slider and that brought in a little bit more of an even contrast to our shot. And then what we did is we went down to our black slider and we brought in a lot more contrast with our blacks because that's allowing us to bring in true black without any detail. So now we can head into effects and we can start modifying this portrait using our different filters. So I'm gonna add a filter and the first filter I'm going to add is I'm gonna add the all new channel mixer filter. So with this channel mixer filter here, I really like to use it for black and whites. And in these preset styles, these more styles, one thing I like to do is I'll go in here and I'll use some of these black and white filters. And one of my favorites is this black and white red filter. So this red filter, this is emulating a black and white red filter if it was screwed on to the front of your lens. What that means is, is this is modifying the different colors in this black and white to target the black and, or sorry, this is modifying the different colors in this black and white channel mixer to bring out all of the different red tones in the area. So if I go into my filter and I add another filter, I'm gonna add the curves filter. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this curves filter below the channel mixer. And then I'm gonna head into my red. And now I can modify this black and white with this red tone curve really easily. So if I pull up on this, it's going to brighten it. If I pull down on this, it's going to darken it. It's basically acting like my tone curve, but instead it's applying it to a black and white. I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna add in a little bit of contrast. So I'll actually reset this real quick. So I'll reset this tone curve and I'll click red. Okay, so in this tone curve, this bottom left area is your black point. So this is going to control all of the blacks in your photograph. So if I pull up on it and I pull to the right, it's going to bring in some contrast and kind of a faded matte look. And I actually really like that for this particular photograph, so I'm probably gonna leave that on there like that. And then I can go into my shadow tones, which is the tones right above your blacks and right below your midtones, is I can modify my shadow tones now. I'm just gonna bring them up right about there. So now if I turn this tone curve off and on, it's doing a nice job of bringing in a little bit more contrast into this black and white so that it's not so bright. And then I can pull down on these highlights a little bit, and that'll remove some of that bright area on our skin. So the channel mixer is an awesome filter for just modifying the look on your shot. And you can always use just your tone curve to go in and you can modify the different color channels. But make sure if you're using that or if you're doing this method that whatever color you have for the filter, for example, I have black and white red filter. So if I go into my tone curve, I have red selected and that'll allow me to modify those red tones in that channel mixer. But if I have blue selected, it's not gonna do anything to my shot. So just make sure that if you are going to do this method of modifying your black and white, that you have the correct color selected in your tone curve. All right, so now we'll move on and we'll add another filter and we'll add the color balance filter. So the color balance filter is an awesome, awesome filter for portraits because it allows you to modify your shadow tones, your midtones, and your highlights. So it's basically like the split tone filter except we have the midtones now. So first thing I do with this color balance filter is I usually go into my shadows. So for this photo, I think the shadows could be a nice, maybe dark blue, navy blue. So I'm gonna go down to my amount I'm gonna pull it up so I can see what I'm working with. And then I'll take this hue and I'll drag it over to the blues. Make it kind of a darker blue. And I'm kind of trying to match this color on our blanket right there. Maybe about right in there. Perfect. And then we'll pull down on the brightness just a little bit and that'll add in some of that contrast. So then we can go into midtones. And for the midtones, I think what would look nice is maybe an orangish color. So I'll just bring this over to a nice orange. Maybe a little bit less. And then we'll pull up on the midtones a little bit. There we go. So now we can go into highlights and same thing, 
for the highlights, I'm just going to modify the different. Okay, let me back up a little bit. So in this midtones tab, the reason that I'm modifying my midtones and bringing in a warm color is because the midtones again are her skin tones. So to bring in warmth to her skin tones, I'm just going to pull up on that amount there, and then I'll play with the hue, and that's bringing in some of that nice warm color and applying it to the midtones, which are mainly her skin tones. And then we have highlights right here. So our highlights are going to be the brighter areas on the photo. Mainly just this area in here and then a lot of the whites on the shot. So if I pull up on the amount and I modify this hue slider, you can see where the highlight tone is being applied to. The majority of it is being applied in this area, but a lot of it is being applied in her hair and then even on the cup right here. So for this particular photo, I think what would look good is just going up and giving it sort of a reddish orange color. And then we'll pull up on the brightness a little bit right there. So now if I go up and I turn this color balance filter off and on, it's pretty subtle, but you can see that it really does wonders to bring out these different color tones in the shot and also allows me to modify all of the different tonalities of my highlights, midtones, and shadows. So I can actually pull down on the brightness of each of these individually just by using this one filter. And I'm actually going to leave this color balance filter right here, and then we'll add another filter, and we'll add the sun flare filter. So the sun flare filter, as you can see, adds on sun flares to your photos. And it's really awesome for portraits, especially portraits outside where the sun is hitting your subject. So for this particular portrait, what, what I want to do is bring a sun flare to this left side. So if you're thinking of adding on a sun flare to your photograph, just make sure that wherever the sun is hitting your subject in the photo, that's the direction that you want the sun flare coming from. So you definitely don't want the sun flare on this side of this portrait because the sun you can see is coming from the left. So I can go into my sun flare filter here and if I want to flip it or arrange it differently, I can head down to my transform area and I'm just going to flip it horizontally this way. And now it looks a lot more natural coming from the left side of the shot. So inside the sunflower filter, we can change the amount and I'm going to pull up on the amount to 100 just so it's in, at 100% and it's strong on the shot because I can always go in and lower the opacity up here. But inside the sunflower filter, you can choose your type and there's three types. There's bokeh, there's sunflower, and there's sun stars. I typically use the sun flares, but if you're shooting landscapes, the sun stars can be um, an easy tool to bring out some life inside of your scene. And then inside tone and color, we can modify the tone and color of the sun star. So if I want to make it brighter, I can make it brighter or less bright. And then I can modify the saturation. I can change the color. So I can bring it over to this red and then I'll kind of match this photo already. And then I can make it larger. And the one thing that's really useful with this sun flare filter is this little icon right here. So if I click on this, this will allow me to move the sun flare filter around. So I could bring it in a little bit more. I could remove it a little bit more. And it just allows me to move this around my shot. Another thing in the sun flare filter that's awesome is that it actually has the sunshine filter built into it. So if you want to bring in that nice sunshine look, you could just go down and then pull up on your sunshine and it will incorporate a sunshine look onto your shot. So I'm going to do that and I'm actually going to pull back on the temperature just a little bit. And then I'm going to pull back on the amount, or the opacity, sorry, of the sun flare. And we'll probably leave it about right there. But you can see just by adding that sun flare filter, it brings in a lot of style to the shot really easily. And you can always just go in and add on more filters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add on one more filter here. And I'm going to add on that curves filter again. And I'm just going to bring in sort of a faded look. And then I'm going to add in some contrast. And to do that, I'm going to go down here into my shadow areas on this tone curve. And I'm just going to pull back on it. And so that's added in some contrast by pulling down on my shadow tones. And then I'm going to grab my mid-tone point right here. And I'm going to bring it back to where it was. 
So now if I turn this tone curve off and on, it does a great job of bringing back in some of that contrast that we we lost with that sunflower filter, but then it brings back that mid-tone highlight area by just pulling that back up in your tone curve. So now we can hit the backslash key on our keyboard. And I really like what that's doing to the photo. I think with that sunflower filter, it really gives a lot of life to the shot. And then we've warmed it up and modified with our tone curve and our color balance. So that's one way you can modify a portrait. I like that way, especially if I have portraits where I'm shooting it outside and there's a little bit of sun hitting either the hair or the side of the face. This sort of editing goes really well with those types of portraits. All right, so now we can move on to this shot. And I grabbed this shot because I think it's an awesome photo that we can use to really show off how to lower your exposure and then bring back the brightness in your shot. So if we take a look at these two, if we zoom in here on their faces, it looks like this sparkler right here really, really brightened up their faces and it's losing some of the detail in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull back on the exposure and that's gonna bring back some of the detail in their faces. So let's zoom in again and we'll go over to our tone and color pane and we're just gonna pull back on the exposure. And you can see that by pulling back on that exposure, we're really bringing in a lot more detail into their faces and they don't look so blown out. But if I zoom out, now the entire photograph is really, really dark. It's about a stop underexposed. So what we can do to bring back those tonalities is we can head down to our shadow tones and we can pull up on our shadow tones. That's going to bring back some of the shadowy, darker areas in the photograph. And then we can pull up on our midtones. Now remember that the midtones in a portrait are more often than not the skin tones. So if I pull up on these midtones, it's going to be brightening up these skin tones that we already dimmed down a little bit. So just be careful when you're pulling up, pulling up on your midtones when you're removing some of the exposure because it's going to bring back some of the skin tone brightness and it might bring back some of those blown out areas. But I think that looks pretty good right about there. And then if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, yeah, I like that. I think it's doing a really good job of toning those areas down so we can see more detail in their face. And then we'll head down here and if I zoom in on this chin right here, I can see that it's a little bit bright right there and these whites right here are pretty bright in the shot. So I'm just gonna go over to my whites and I'm gonna pull it down to zero. And you can see it helps just remove some of those brighter areas in the shot. So we're, right, we're on the right track, we're moving along. And one thing I think we could do is I'm actually gonna remove some of this contrast from this shot. And the reason I wanna remove some of this contrast is A, I wanna brighten up this photo. So by removing the, removing the contrast, you can see that I can see a lot more of these darker areas in the shot now. And B, when I remove contrast, I'm removing some of the color saturation. And you can see that when I remove this, that contrast, See how it took away some of that bright orange glow from their face? So I'm just gonna remove a little bit of the contrast right there, just like that, and then I'm gonna add contrast back in by using my black slider. So I'm gonna head back down to that black slider here, hold down J on my keyboard, and then I'll just bring in a little bit of true black. Oops, maybe not that much. So let's pull back up on our contrast a little bit. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. As far as the foundational look goes, I think that's pretty good for this shot. And then one thing we could do is we could modify the color a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go in here to my color tones. I'm gonna click on K so I can see it in Kelvin. And then I'm gonna pull back on the temperature, just a hair, like that. Perfect. So 2675, okay. Sweet. 
So now if we have the backslash key on our keyboard, I think as far as the develop tab goes, this photo is looking A-OK. -okay. So let's head into our effects tab. And let's add a filter. And let's add that channel mixer filter. So the channel mixer filter, again, is an awesome, awesome filter for black and whites. So with this shot, it would look awesome in a black and white because then it would really just show off this bright area in the photograph where the light is hitting the couple. So let's go over here and we'll choose our more and we'll go into a black and white green filter. So now with this black and white green filter applied, I'm gonna add a filter and I'll add that curves filter. And then I'm gonna pull this curves filter below my channel mixer and I'll go into the curves and then I'll click on my green tab. That's gonna grip, give me my green tone curve. And then same thing. I could just modify the tones in this tone curve to modify the look on my shot. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a faded matte look again, just like that. And then I'm gonna pull back on the shadows a little. And then I'll bring back my midtones again. So even just like that, if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I like the black and white shot a lot. But we can go in here and let's add a filter and let's bring in a little more extra oomph to this photo. So I'll add another filter and let's add the weather filter. And I'm gonna go into this weather filter and I'm gonna add on a, a snow overlay. So to do that, I'm gonna go into my texture and here we can choose different textures to overlay onto our shot. So I think I'm gonna use, yeah, I'll use this accumulation one. And you can see it's pretty strong, but it still looks really good on the shot and adds sort of a Christmassy feel to it. So I'm gonna go over to my opacity, I'm gonna turn it up all the way, and then I'm gonna mask this out from this middle spot. And to do that, I'm going to use my masking bug. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking bug. Now I'm gonna go up to shape, and I'm gonna choose center. So if I drop this down now, this is telling Photo Raw to apply this entire weather filter outside of everywhere besides the inside, sorry. That's telling Photo Raw to apply this weather filter to everywhere on this photograph except for the inside of this mask. So this allows me to go in and I can really modify what's inside of this mask to make it blended and look a lot more natural on the shot. So I'm just gonna pull this in quite a bit, maybe make it a circle like that. Make it really small. So I'll just make it really small and then I'm gonna pull it right here. Maybe rotate a little bit. And then I'm just gonna pull on these feathering handles a ton. And then I'll just pull this up a little bit, maybe like that. Okay, so now if I turn this weather filter off and on, it's a little too fake right in there. So we'll go into this weather filter, and I'm gonna go into my masking options for this weather filter, and in our masking options, we can modify the density of this mask, which basically means if I pull back on this density slider, it's going to return the mask back to 100%. So I'm just gonna pull that back a little bit just to bring some of that snow back into this area of the shot. And then we're gonna modify this weather filter by pulling back on the opacity and then bringing it in a little bit. Just like that. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I really like what that weather filter is doing and it gives a nice sort of Christmassy snow feel to the shot. Okay, so for this portrait, this is one of those instances, geez, I cannot talk today guys, I'm really sorry. So for this portrait, this is one of those instances where we have a bright hat, a bright area on our photograph, and then we have this sort of dim, dark area on our shot. But with portraits, it's kind of, the opposite where we want this area to be dark and we want her face to be light. So what we're gonna do in here is we're actually gonna go in 
and modify this area using a local adjustment after we modify our tone and color for this photograph. So inside of my develop tab here, I'm gonna go down and the first thing I wanna pull out are these skin tones. So I'm not really worried about this hat right now because we can always go back in and lower the exposure for this with a local adjustment, but we're really just focused on the face right now. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna pull up all my mid tones and shadow tones. Just like that. And you can see that by pulling up on those, it brightens up the image quite a bit. But it's also looking incredibly flat. So we'll head back up to our contrast and we'll give it some contrast. Then we can head down here and I'm actually gonna modify these whites a little bit. I'm gonna bring in just a little bit of this white. So then we can head down to our color and I'm actually going to pull back on the temperature just a hair to cool it down. Probably about right there. I think that looks a little bit more natural. So what we've gone and done is I've modified my mid-tones and my shadows, and that's brought out this area, the darker areas on the photograph. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pull in a local adjustment layer, and we're going to apply that to this hat area to darken it. So we'll go over to our local adjustments tab. In our local adjustment layer, I'm gonna make sure it's set to darken. And then I'm gonna hold down shift and hit K on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my adjustable gradient. I'm gonna go up to my shape and make sure it's set to just gradient. Then I can just drop this down. I'll rotate it with this small handle. I'll move it with the bigger handle. And then we'll feather this. Sweet, so if I turn this off and on now, See that does a good job of just toning down that hat so it's not so bright on the photo. And then I've hit the backslash key on my keyboard. We're really moving along nicely and I think that looks like a great start to this portrait. So now we can go into effects. I'll add a filter and I'll add that channel mixer filter. So the channel mixer filter again is awesome for black and whites. So it's typically what I use it for if I'm using it on portraits, just because it does get a little crazy with the colors. So I'm gonna go into more and I'll choose this black and white blue filter. And you can see already just by using this black and white, I really, really love what that's doing to the expression and really making us focus on our eyes in the black and white. So we can always go in and add a filter and add a curves filter. I could go into my blue. I'll bring this down below my channel mixer. Oops. And then I can modify the blues and modify the tone in the shot. So I'm gonna pull down on the shadows just a little bit. And then I'm gonna add in these mid-tones again. Or these highlights rather. Maybe just a little bit of a faded look. Perfect. So now if I turn so now if I turn this tone curve off and on. See that just brings in some nice mood to the shot. So the channel mixer is an awesome, awesome filter if you're looking to apply black and white style to your shot. And then I typically use a curves filter if I'm using one of the blue or green or red filters, and then I'll go in and modify that specific color tone. All right, so now we'll add another filter, and I'll add the color balance filter. So with this photo, I think we could go in and make it a little bit cooler. It's pretty warm already. So let's start with our shadows and I'll go down to my amount and I'll pull it up to 50 and then it gives me an idea of what I'm using as far as color goes. So I'll take that hue and then I'll pull it over. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a nice green maybe. I think that looks cute right there. Okay, and then we can modify the amount. Looks pretty good. And then we'll go into our midtones. So our midtones, I think we could use still just a nice warm color. So I'll pull up on my amount. Then I'll pull up on my hue. 
to a warmish color. Maybe a little less. It's already pretty warm anyway. And then we'll pull up on the brightness. Sweet. So then we can head into our highlights and then we'll bring into some we'll bring in some color into these highlights. I'll pull up on my amount. And then I'll make these. Let's make them a nice red. I actually do kind of like that red. And then we'll brighten these a little bit as well. So just by using the color balance, we brightened up the shot and removed a little bit of that, that warmish color cast from our portrait here. And one thing I could do here is I could probably add another curves filter and I could just tone down some of the shadow tones like that and then bring back the midtones to where they were. Sweet. So we have the backslash key on our keyboard really just a whole different looking portrait than it was before. And so let's add another filter and let's add the sun flare filter. And if I turn this off and on already, it's doing a pretty good job of bringing in some sun flare look to the shot. But I'm gonna go into my type here, or not my type, I'm gonna go into texture. And I'm gonna choose this sun flare three. I'll pull up on the amount to 100. And then if I turn this off and on, I really like what that's doing up here to this hat. It's kind of removing it as a distraction and really focusing me on this eye right there. And then we could play with the brightness a little bit. And then we'll add in a little bit of sunshine and we'll make it kind of cool. Sweet. So now if I have the backslash key on my keyboard, I like what that does on to this portrait. I really like the sun flare on that shot. All right, so are there any other questions before I show you guys how to export the portraits? All right, so now let's say we want to print these portraits that we just made. Well, I'm just gonna grab these portraits right here. And if we wanna print our portraits, it's incredibly easy. All you have to do in Photoraw 2020 is just select what you wanna print and then head down and you can just click on print. So now we're inside the print module. And the way I have it laid out right here is it's actually applying different photos to one single page. But what you can do is you can modify it to print one photo on a single page. So this is great if we want to have some cutouts or we want to maybe create a portfolio binder with some portraits. But if we want to print just one single portrait on a page, maybe to frame it on a wall, we need to go in here and modify our printer settings. So the first thing we need to do is we need to modify our printer. So first things first, pick your printer, then pick your page size. So I'm actually going to print on US letter and I'm going to change my orientation or actually I'll leave my orientation at vertical. Then we head down to color and this is where we're going to choose our printer profile. So with portraits, I'm going to head down and let's choose luster paper. So we'll use this paper pro luster. And then I'm gonna head down to my print area and I'm gonna click on this fit. Gone in here and actually put one portrait on each page. So now if you wanted to print these, you could easily just head down and you could click print all and then it would print them all if you had a printer set up. Or if you wanted to have multiple portraits on a single page, you could just head down into this print area and you could click four by fives and it will put four by fives onto your page. And then you can modify this in your custom area. So you could modify the rotation. So if you didn't want them to be rotated, you could click that. And also we could head down to our fitting and then we could, ch we could check fill. 
or fit, sorry. And it will fit them rather than cropping them. So just a quick way to print if you want to print your portraits. Another way to share your portraits really easily is through SmugMug. So if you want to share your portraits through SmugMug, just make sure you have whatever photos that you want to publish to your SmugMug account selected. Then head over and click Share, and then click SmugMug. So I'm in my SmugMug Publish dialog, and I'm just going to sign in real quick. Sweet. So now it's authorized, and then I'm going to go up to my gallery, and let's actually create a new gallery. And I'll just name this Portraits. And I'll click Create. And one thing to remember, if you are shooting portraits for a client and let's say you want to upload those, you can actually upload those into a private gallery so that you're the only one that has the link so that you could send her or him the link and then no one else will see those photos because it's private. So I'm just going to click Create. There we go. Look at that. OK, so there's our portraits gallery. And I can click Share. And then you can see at the bottom, it's giving us a little indicator as to how long it's going to take to share these photographs. And then once it shares them, you can just go to your SmugMug account and it will be uploaded to your gallery that you chose. So with the SmugMug, it's a really, really easy way to share your portraits and then people can access them. You can make them private. Um, SmugMug is just an awesome way to, to view photos and share photographs. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next On One webinar next week.